Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser. This video is part of a series on basic Java programming for programmers. So if you know how to some programming, but just not Java yet, this video is for you. In this video, we will cover creating a data class. By that, I mean a class which just stores a bit of data, allows access to it, and kind of working with that data briefly. OK, so I've already got my program created. See the previous video if you don't yet know how to create a basic program in IntelliJ. I've named this one DoorSim. And when I run my program, I'll go Control shift f 10 in my main. And it'll run. And we can see here it just prints something to the screen. So nothing interesting yet. Let's go through and create our class. Inside of my source under main Java, I'm going to right click and say I want a new Java class. My Java class, I'm going to name Door. It's a door simulator thing, why not? OK, so the first thing I'm going to do inside my new class is I'm going to give it a javadoc comment. Uh, javadoc is a way of describing things so that it can be processed by some tools, and particularly your IDE is going to like that as well. I'm going to give all of my, uh, com my classes meaningful comments at the top. So this is going to say, represent a doors wait and what else do I want to know about a door? Um, yeah, and state. Open, closed. This is at least enough that you don't have to read the rest of my code to figure out, is this the file I want as I'm changing the rest of my code around? OK, so we've got a basic class. No one's using it yet. Um, let's give it some data to store. So I'm going to make it private. Always make your data private um, so that nobody else can touch it. And let's have it store some values. So I'm going to make it a Boolean, and I call it is open. If it's not open, it's closed. So is open, it's going to be initialized to false by default when constructed, so that's good. And the other one I want to store is the weight of the door. So private, and let's make it an int just to keep it simple. And let's call this the weight in grams. Now, that's enough that I'm storing the data. Um, a lot of things we're going to want to do, let me just get rid of this at the bottom. Um, a lot of the stuff we're going to want to do is what's called boilerplate code, um, getters, setters, constructors, and so forth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold down Alt. Okay. So this is going to be Alt plus in the insert key on your keyboard. So I'll do that now, Alt plus insert, and I can generate some things. So let's start off by generating a constructor. Um, I can pick what arguments I want, so I'll control click on those and select all that I want. And these can be the arguments that are set. So my constructor here is going to be what is executed when I create this object. So I'm going to pass in is open and wait in grams, and it's stored here accessing this. This will access the current object once created. So that will allow me to build my, uh, my um, class. When I instantiate it, I'm going to do Alt Insert again, and I'm going to create. Uh, let's do getters and setters. I normally wouldn't build getter or setters, pardon me, for things that I don't want to set later, but we'll just do it here for simplicity. So we've got is open and set open, and we've got get weight and set weight. So IntelliJ was smart enough to name the function is open. When I'm querying my object, I can call the is open function, and then get weight because it was just another value. So those are some great getters and setters that I want. And then the last thing that I want IntelliJ to build for me is what's called the toString function. All Java objects have a toString function, which can be used by our tools. Let me do this again. Um, and that will allow us to convert our object to a string. We probably don't want to use this for something that's really facing the user, because we want a bit more control over that. But it's good for debugging. And I might actually print it to the screen here just to, uh, to show what it does. So I'm going to call to string, get to string. And why not? We'll print out both of these. The standard, uh, the default format is going to be OK for us here. OK, so that's enough to show what we can auto-generate. So now I've got uh, 36 lines of code. And I wrote two of them. So that's looking good for me. I'll delete that. So now we've got our code. Let's go back to main and use it just a little bit. So I'm going to first off, I'm going to create a door. So I'm going to say door, and let's call it on lowercase door equals new door. I'm going to instantiate a new object. And if I just tried to do this, that would try calling the default constructor of which I don't have one, a zero argument constructor. I do not have one. So if I go into here and hit Control P, Control P on a Windows keyboard, it tells me the arguments 
that I need to use. So it's telling me here is open is the first one. So I'm going to pass in false. It's not open. And the weight, let's make it weigh, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms. That's a pretty heavy door. That's fine. Now that I have my door, oops, uh, let's print it out to the screen. So I'm going to do S out and hit enter. And I'm going to print out doors um, to string gives us, and let's just concatenate here. Now I could call door dot to string. Oops. I could do that. But as it turns out, whenever you need a string on an object, it automatically calls toString for you. So in this case, I don't need to call toString, and I can just print it out. So I'm going to hit Shift F10, because I've already run this program once. And here's my object. So doors to string gives us door. It tells us the class that we're in. And it'll tell us is open is false. The weight in grams is uh, 10 kilograms. OK, that's pretty good so far. Let's do a little bit more with that, though. We're going to add in a little bit more functionality to my door class. So I'm going to come down here to the, just probably just above my toString. I often have toString as last. I'm going to say I want a public function, because I want anyone to call this. And I'm going to say int, let's call this one get the min num hinges. Uh, I'm going to call this one, for example, if I want to know how many hinges do I need to put on this door as I hang it on the wall. So for this, I'm going to need to take the weight. So I'm going to return my weight. And I'm going to divide it by, well, it turns out here i got to do some bit of fun. I normally might divide by some, say, each, each hinge, say, can take on, I don't know, 3 kilograms of weight. Now, this is a magic number, so I want to do something with that. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say uh, factor and then extract, and then I'm going to extract it into a constant. I don't want to name it int. I want to name it, say, max weight per hinge. Hit Enter. If I control click on it, it's going to, I'm going to get rid of this one at the bottom. If I control click on it, it takes me to where it was defined, and it automatically put it up here at the top of my class. As it turns out, mm, do I want this public or f private? I'm going to make it public just in case anyone needs it. Um, in fact, I probably want to rename this because max weight per hinge doesn't tell me the units. So I'm going to do Shift F6 to rename in grams. And that renamed it everywhere in the code, including down here. Now this is almost what I want. Uh, the weight in grams divided by the max weight in hinges is going to not tell me the minimum number. Uh, so I need to actually kind of round up effectively. So I'm going to call math.ceiling uh, on this value to round it up. But of course, my problem is that these are ints, and an int divided by an int gives me an integer. So I want to force it to flip it over to do double arithmetic. Uh, so I'm going to do here, I'm going to cast one to double. And now it's not yet working. I'm going to right move my mouse over, it and it says incompatible types, required int found double. Ah, I'm requiring an int here, so I'm going to pass back a double. Hmm. Well, maybe that's not quite what I want, because I, the number of hinges can't be a double. It has to be an int. So let's cast this to an int. It's getting a little complicated, so let's make this a little clearer with an indentation. And that'll do, I think. And that'll show me a bit of what's going on. OK, let's test it out, see if it worked. So I'm going to come over here and S out again. And let's say, uh, you need, we're going to call door dot. And now it lists me all the ones I want. And I want get min num hinges. Hinges. That should do us. So let's run this. So here we have 10,000, we have 10 kilograms each door hinge can take up to, let me right click on I click on that, three kilograms. So we're expecting this to give me requiring four hinges. And it did. Now, even if my math isn't quite right, we're at least kind of demonstrating what we need. So what do we see? We saw how to uh, create a class, a data class that stores some data for us. We made all of our values private, and we have accessors and setter functions. And then we added some functions that actually encapsulate some functionality. So in this case, get num hinges for that. 
One last thing I'll show here is we could do something like uh, door dot set uh, is open, and we're going to set this to true. We'll open the door, and I will then do something like if door dot is open, then s out it's open. And that'll just show how we can use the setter function. Shift F9, run it. There you go. It's open. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, see the other videos in the series. If you're interested in carrying on with a bit more of the basic introduction to Java, and if you liked it, go ahead and click subscribe.